Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back for games seven and eight of week three of the draft Premier League between Wiggly Tufts Guild and Pori God Squad. This game is a sword and shield game and it will see Hunter taking on TDG. Hunter's using the rain and if you don't know about TDG, TDG is one of the strongest players in the DPL by far. Uh, has played Swish for a few seasons now and has been pretty much uncontested the best swish player in this format so this is going to be a tall order for hunter but all we need is one win in this video and we secure the week and finally walk away from a week with a win so that is what we are going to try to do so as you can see uh, TDG's team is quite interesting. There's a uh, Rhyperior, there's a Scallopede. Uh, the top three are really good. They're really good Swishmons. Uh, and then there's a Permarina at the bottom, a Mesprit we kind of expected to come as well. And you guys know Hunter's Rain by now. And uh, he brought like near full rain mode. Well, it is pretty much rain mode, right? So it's, uh, uh, there's no Dracovish, but uh, for the first time this season as well, Hunter did not bring the Sableye. So that's interesting. But we are going to lead off with Pelipper which is something that uh, Hunter's been trying to avoid doing this season, is leading with Pelipper, because it's kind of like the obvious rain lead, right? You just get up your rain immediately. But he does do it here, uh, as Pelipper actually does lead pretty well into this team outside of the Electivire, and this Mesprit specifically. It can take on most other things. Gotta watch out for like Meteor Beam on Celesteela, gotta watch out for Specs Moonblast, but other than that, you're pretty good. So, Pelipper leads, and he's immediately gonna switch out into Tornadus on a sunny day, so... The rain goes away, uh, but we get up a nasty plot here. Thunder Wave hits, and we are Lumberry. So uh, now we're going to be able to fire off an attack without actually being slower than the Mesprit, so this is nice. And uh, we get off a Weather Ball, and 62%. Thunder Wave misses. So that's huge. Now our torna Tornadus is at plus two, and nothing comes in here <laughs> at all on plus two Weather Ball. So TDG is going to basically have to sack here, goes into the Garchomp, takes a plus two Weather Ball, does 58%, and uh, Torn I think, just keeps Weather Balling, and it knocks out the Mesprit. So now the Sunny Daemon, their, their form of getting rid of our rain temporarily, uh, is now eliminated because we dodged a Thunder Wave, so kind of lucky. And now in comes Celesteela, as uh, we go for a Hurricane, it does 48%, and the Celesteela goes for Heavy Slam and gets an instant KO on Torn, which I believe means that it's Choice Banded, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, right here, we're going to go into Ferrothorn. The Celesteela is going to switch out, and we're going to get up Rocks, and those are pretty much here to stay. There's no Hazard Removal on the team, as you can see. Uh, I think their only form of Hazard... No, they didn't have any Hazard Removal. That was, uh, that was something that was quite important, actually, in this matchup, was that there was no way for TDG to control Hazards, so if they go up fully it's pretty much gg from there so in comes seismitoad as the uh, zarud comes in so they ca tdg catches that but now pelipper comes in on i believe the uh the power whip miss so we missed a couple of turns there uh, essentially ferrothorn was in zarud came in as seismitoad came in because ferrothorn scared out by the electivire's possible fire move and then seismitoad is scared out by the grass move but the zarud misses the grass move in power whip on the pelipper uh, another very big turn for us. Rock Slide comes out, does 55%. That plus Whip would have, would have easily knocked us out. But now we get off a U-turn, get in Barrascuta, and uh, we, I think we are able to flip turn from here as Celesteela comes in. Now we go for a close combat, and Celi lives on 3%. Uh, and then we are going to go for another close combat. So down goes the Celesteela as uh, now the uh, Primarina is going to come in, and we're going to click flip turn. So we're actually not choiced in any way. Uh, and uh, we made this decision because we thought that it was best to be able to switch up moves in this matchup and not lock into one specific move because the root is really annoying and so is Garchomp uh, with its rough skin and whatnot and Primarina being a water type, etc. So we decided no choice item and we're going to flip out and in comes Ferrothorn on the Whirlpool. So the Primarina is going to try to take down the Ferrothorn with it, I suppose. And uh, here comes Parashong and we go for Leech Seed. Uh, I don't know if I necessarily agree with the Leech Seed, but we do need the Primarina a little bit lower, so this isn't a terrible play. Uh, and now we're going to, I believe, get up Spikes here. Yes, and we're going to put them up. So now those are here to stay as well, which means we have a guaranteed 24% uh, off on Electivire and Zerud and 18% on the Garchomp. So that's huge. Uh, now the Parish Count falls to two. We catch a Moonblast, does 19%, not much at all. And we're going to get up a second Spike. Now here... Um, I was kind of surprised by Hunter's play here. 
He ends up going for Gyro Ball this turn. I felt like going for the third spike was completely free. While yes, you could catch a switch out, if Permarina switches out uh, to preserve itself, it's dead to hazards anyway, and the third spike is quite impactful everywhere, right? It's an increase of 9% damage across the other three members. So I quite liked Spike here, but I guess Hunter wanted to catch something coming in, wanted to uh, to try to outplay, and uh, catches a Moonblast and goes for Gyro Ball. The sub breaks, but that doesn't matter. The, the Parish Song is going to knock out both Pokemon on the field. And we end up with one layer of rocks and two layers of spikes, which is still very, very good. Now, in comes the Zarud. As we get in Barrasquita, we go for close combat, and that's going to knock out the Zarud. So I guess Hunter scouted uh, the damage, saw in the calcs that he was able to, to knock out the Zarud with close combat from there. And I guess we also figured out that this was Boots because it came in and didn't take any damage from the hazards. So it can't be Choppleberry. So uh, being Boots can't be Scarfed or Chopple. So that means that Barrascuta's close combat is pretty much free. I just want to confirm that this was indeed boots. It is. Okay, cool. So it didn't take hazard damage yet. So close combat, pretty free. Scuta is able to get rid of the Zarud. And in comes the Garchomp, and that is sitting at 20%. And uh, we're going to switch out into Pelipper to get the rain back up. And now it's very easy. It's just uh, Barrascuta outspeeds Garchomp, even if it gets off two scale shots. Uh, it's able to outspeed that. And uh, it does get one off there, but that's not going to be enough. Even if it's Scarfed, we're still faster right now. And we just go for Aqua Jet and knock it out. I think we could have just gone for uh, the Liquidation there. That would have been fine too, but uh, it doesn't really matter as we're able to, uh, to knock out the Garchomp there. And as you can see, we were protective pads as well for Rocky Helmets across the team. So that's the item that we decided on. And now the, the Electivire is going to come in. We're going to click Liquidation. It's going to do 80. We are going to go down to Thunder here, but we still have two more turns of rain and a Seismitoad to come in here and click Weather Ball and give Wigglytuff's Guild its first win this season. So uh, we are now 5-2. and two. Uh, Regardless of what happens in the last game, we do win the week, but we do want to try to extend our lead. So we are going to watch this last game here. We're going to try to make this 6-2 week as opposed to a 5-3 week. And uh, shout outs to Hunter for an excellently played game. Great prep all season thus far. This team has gone above and beyond uh, what we expected it to do. It's really caught people off guard and been able to to keep up its weather when it needed to and play ultra aggressively. And I think it really fits Hunter's style very well. So I'm really glad that we were able to make this for him. So moving on to the last game, we have our captain, Money Guy, facing off against Kiliminati. So this was one of the drafts that we have that needs a, a little bit of an overhaul because we're a little bit too reliant on Fezzendipity on this team is what we've come to realize over these three weeks. So this is one of the teams that we're going to be addressing immediately during mids. And uh, this matchup did not look great. There was a lot here that was very annoying for us. As you can see, their team is very scary. Uh, Terra River Room plus the top three is just absolutely disgusting. And then they also have a Terra Salamence and uh, Araquanid Bramblegast and Ampharos is whatever, but uh, they're all still very viable Pokemon into this format. So whereas you look at our team and Electrode and Meganium are not that viable and Pheasantipity is arguably one of the most disappointing fairies of all time. So this is going to be tough. But we do have a game plan here. So, Money is going to lead off with Latios. And uh, Rev of Room leads off for them. And we are going to go for the Luster Purge and hit into the Darkrai. Okay, cool. We now catch a Thunder Wave as we also go for a Thunder Wave on the Darkrai. So, we trade Thunder Waves as uh, two legendary Pokemon just paralyze each other. And Dark Pulse comes out into Pheasantipity. We are able to eat that very well. In comes Lando and we go for U-Turn, trying to trigger Toxic Chain. Doesn't trigger. And in comes Meow Scarada. And uh, now we're going to click, I believe, U-Turn again. And we're going to see that the Rev of Room is indeed Rocky Helmet. So had we clicked a Triple Axle or Knock Off there, for example, right? Uh, then we would have taken, well, Knock Off would have been the same amount of damage. Triple Axle would have been a lot more into our Miascarada. So good scout there from, uh, from Money Guy. And now we're going to go into our King Gambit. And we're going to Terra into a Flying type as uh, Kelamanati predicts that and goes for Iron Head. And we're able to get off another Thunder Wave and now go into Electrode on another Iron Head. And uh, we are Rocky Helmet. 
So they take some chip. Now we're going to go back into King Gambit and catch Landorus. Huge play here because, as you can see, they have a Landorus and a Salamence. So instead of being Supreme Overlord, we're actually Defiant. And our attack goes up to plus one. And uh, now we're going to be able to fire off a Terra Blast or a Lash Out. Okay, so Lash Out comes out. We're able to do good damage into the Reverend Room. And we had a Lash Out again to knock it out. But now the Rocky Helmet Mon is gone, which opens up Meow Skarata quite a bit. As you can see, their Triple Axle switch ins do not exist. Now, the Salamence is Terra Fairy, and we see that at preview. And uh, so there is a way to bypass Meow Skarada being able to like kill it right away, right? So the Reverend Room never, never terrored, meaning the Salamence still can't. Now, Bramble Gas comes in, eats a Sucker Punch, takes 64% because of Colber, and uh, then Leaf Storm. I don't know why Leaf Storm was clicked exactly, but it was, and it's able to chip us a little bit, but not enough. And uh, now Spikes go up as Terra Blast comes out and knocks out the Bramble Gas. So great plays here from Money, of course, catching pretty much every turn thus far. So now Salamence is going to come in and it's going to trigger Defiant again. Now, of course, they are Terra Fairy. We know they're probably going to click Terra Fairy here because they don't want to catch a Sucker Punch. And they go for Terra Blast. And it's not enough to knock out Electrode. And in comes Landorus as we go for another Thunder Wave. So uh, as you can see, we were quite T-Wave spam heavy on this team. Three Mons with Thunder Wave. And uh, now we're going to taunt the Lando as it goes for a U-Turn and takes some more Chip from Rocky Helmet and Aftermath. So that's great. Lando's a little bit lower. Now we're going to go into Pheasantipity on the uh, Salamence, and Lando's going to switch in on Icy Wind and die <laughs> in one. So that was a great turn for us, uh, as uh, Icy Wind looked pretty good here, just like Triple Axel did, right? Their Ice Resist is literally just Rev of Room and whatever Terra type they choose to put on their Salamence. And uh, so now the Darkrai comes in. We're going to go for a U-turn. And we're going to get in our King Gambit, uh, and we're going to take a Psy Shock, and we're going to go down. So uh, now it's four to three, as now we position our Meow Skarada, and we are going to go for uh, the U-turn, I believe. Yes, U-turn here, and Salamence takes 9%. We take some Rocky Helmets, so they had another Helmet on the team, and now Pheasantipity comes in. And we go for Moonblast, and we do 41% with a crit. However, unfortunately, the Salamence clicks Dragon Dance. So... I don't know about clicking Moonblast there because it's, first of all, as you can see, a crit only did 41. Secondly, it's still very possible for Salamence to run Dragon Dance even on a defensive set. Uh, I've done it multiple times before. It's very, it, it's very fittable on sets because Salamence often only needs two moves. And in this case, it only needs Terror Blast and Earthquake. That's it. That's all it needs. So that's quite scary for us and now the only way to really salvage this is going to be well you'll see as Pheasantipity drops to Earthquake takes 88% and now we're going to go into Meow Skarada and we are going to click Flower Trick uh, however Flower Trick is actually not enough to knock out the Salamence it does 46% and Salamence is going to go for a Terra Blast and knock us out we have one more way which is Latios with Focus Sash and Focus Sash is going to allow us to knock out the Salamence finally. However, Valiant comes in and it is booster energy and it's going to knock us out with Moonblast here. And I don't believe we are a resist berry on Quackville or anything like that. So this is going to be the end of the game as Quackville goes down and we end the week on five and three, a little bit unfortunate there. I feel like we could have played for that end game a little bit better, not, not like in game, but we could have like figured out this end game a little bit better in the prep phase and, uh, and tried to find a way around DD Salamence with Terra Fairy because Terra Fairy was kind of obvious uh, into this team the top four are like super fairy week in general like gambit doesn't ever terra into a type that resists fairy anyway it's very rare because if it terrors into a poison it's still weak to ground and if it terrors into a uh, steel type then same thing right it's still weak to ground still weak to fighting so not generally typings that you want to be terrestrializing into with your king gambit so as a result our top four is very fairy weak uh and being that Pheasantipity is the only fairy resist on the team, it makes it very clear that people can just click Terra Fairy and run away with it. So this is something that we're going to have to address in the uh, mids section, which is this entire upcoming week. We're actually not going to have videos for the games for this week because, of course, there's a break week here, which is where transactions happen for players, uh, dropping players, picking up players, as well as uh, a limited amount of transactions per format uh, for SV, Swish, Usum, and Oras. So... 
this that's what we're going to be spending our time on this week so you guys get a little bit of a break from from me from seeing my face and uh, from videos here on the channel i'm going to be working on some other stuff in the meantime there's another tournament that i am participating in that i might be doing a little bit of coverage on which is the draft league world cup stay tuned for that if nothing happens uh, of interest, then I might not upload any videos for it, but it's something that I've, I've thought about maybe doing. In the meantime, I'm also going to be working on shorts for the channel. Going to be trying to take advantage of some of the hype moments in the DPL videos and posting them as shorts and just finding stuff from my channel that I can post as shorts so that you can guys have like a little 15 to 20 second snippets to watch uh, from my channel. And uh, that drives some traffic to the channel as well from just the uh, just the shorts feed in general from from YouTube as a whole. And that's really good. Obviously, people finding the channel by chance is, is always fun. So yeah, that's uh, that's going to be it for this week, guys. We do end up with the win over Pori God Squad. So great job to everybody on the team. It was a really good series. I really enjoyed the way that this played out and the amount of prep that we put into it. And I'm really happy to walk away with a win. Finally, in the third week of the DPL, we finally have a win. And we didn't even lose the first two weeks, which is insane. This has never happened before. So uh, we've never had this kind of format before. So this is nice. Uh, I think we now sit at second in the standings uh, with one win and two draws, zero losses, which is quite nice. So hopefully we can extend this and, and keep moving forward and try to make playoffs from here. We're in a really good position to do so. So thank you guys so much for watching. As usual, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If this is your first time on the channel or otherwise, make sure you also hit the like button and leave me a comment. I love to read you guys' comments and react to them. So thank you guys again, and I will catch you guys not next week, but the week after. Peace out.